Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to Mariana Trench in Pursuit of the Abyss. I don't know what's happened. I mean, I know what's happened. The The Titanic sub thing has got me just so like, interested in the ocean now. And I've realised I've never really done reactions to the ocean, but specifically the deeper parts of the ocean because there's not much that we know. But what we do know, I don't know about really. I mean, you know, you see like stuff about the fish and stuff, but... I've never done videos on that sort of stuff, I don't think. And with all the stuff happening recently, it's just got me really interested in this stuff, like stuff related to the ocean, all that kind of, those kind of things. I was trying to watch the James Cameron documentary of him going to the Mariana Trench, and I couldn't find it anywhere like, a few days ago. And I was a bit sad, I'm well, not sad, I was a bit disappointed because I was really like, just my mind was just really intrigued about seeing what really went on. But I can't find the documentary anyway, so if anyone knows if I could find that somewhere, whether it's on a certain website or what, I would love that. But yeah, I was searching for quite a bit and I couldn't find it anywhere. It wasn't on Amazon Prime or Netflix, but even I was just searching where it would be and there was no options for it. But maybe I'm just not looking in the right places. But yeah, I'm just interested in this sort of stuff. And as bleak as it probably sounds, because I know it is related to what's happened, I feel like a lot of people's interest has been sparked by by what's happened recently. If I go into the newest first, I'm sure people are probably... Like, I don't know. I don't even know. But um, yeah, we're going to check this out and see what this shows. I don't know this channel. Hopefully this is all right to go on YouTube. If not, this will have to be my Patreon. But if you're watching this on YouTube, then this is all fine. But yeah, links are in the description to my Patreon if you want to see some more of my reactions because that is where stuff goes when I can't post it onto YouTube for whatever reasons. But... Let's just check this out. So this was James Cameron, right? In this in this submarine or submersible. The deep sea <coughs> is a world of extremes. So far in this series, we've taken a look at the ways in which animals have adapted to survive in the cold, dark depths. We've explored the ecosystems of this unforgiving realm and seen how communities of life cling to whatever source of energy they can find, from vents of superheated water to the carrion of sunken whales. What the But hell? now it's time to dive even deeper and discover a place where life is pushed to its absolute limits. For at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, the sea floor widens into a gaping abyss of obscurities. Fish that seem to lack faces. Bruh, these are the fish at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. How are they able to live? Sprawling fields of bacteria. And giants that resemble life from another planet. Let's fuck? take a closer look at the hidden world of the Mariana Trench. Is it just shrimps down there? I mean, I guess they're not shrimps, but it, like the same sort of family just living down there too. The hell? Gates of the Underworld. The infamous Mariana Trench sits like a crescent-shaped dent in the floor of the Pacific. A 2,550 kilometer long, 69 kilometer wide fracture that plummets down into a pure black void. At the bottom, it hosts the deepest known location on Earth, the Challenger Deep, 11,033 meters or 36,200 feet beneath the waves. The trench itself is but one part of a global network of deep scars that cut across the ocean floor. Oh damn. So these are like deeper points on the oceans. So there's one on the coast here. So on this coast, is it just one deep ass coast or something? Because if you go into the, the waters here, you're automatically in, in the deep. What the hell? Features that formed from a process called subduction. In the case of the Mariana Trench, the western edge of the Pacific Plate was thrust beneath the smaller Mariana Plate to the west, creating the deep fracture. 
Molten material then rose through volcanoes near the trench, building the nearby Mariana Islands. Oh, wow. At its deepest point, the Mariana Trench dips down into a little explored zone of the ocean. The Hadal Zone, named after the realm Hades, the underworld of Greek mythology. A suitable title for a place where the conditions of pure darkness, acidic, freezing water, scarce food, and immense pressure create a challenging environment for creatures to survive in. For much of history, it was believed to be a dead zone, void of any life at all. An impossible frontier, and an empty void of perils that could never be reached by any human. But in the 19th century, this was all about to change. The Mariana's depths were first plumbed in 1875. What? When the crew aboard the HMS Challenger cast a weighted sounding line over the side of the vessel and found they needed more rope. They had not expected there to be a location so deep, but news of its discovery caught the eye of the ambitious. They found us out in 1875. That is wild. I don't even know how they managed to just... Was it just luck that they found... <clears throat> they put it in that area, or did they know this area was going to be deeper than other parts of the ocean? Flipping hell. Knowing it existed simply wasn't enough, and a few dared to venture to the bottom. In the pursuit of the abyss. In 1960... 85 years after the Challenger Deep was discovered on that pioneering voyage, two men set out to reach the bottom. Wait, is this a submarine they went in? See, the submarines you see now are so much smaller, but this looks like a pretty normal sized one. Jacques Picard and Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh, sheltered only by a cramped bath escape submersible. <sighs> Mate. Doing this for the first time would I cannot even imagine how the like, the balls these two men have, the balls they must have had. I mean, the balls you must have to do this now. But the first people to go there in this, they must have had no idea what's actually going to happen. Flipping hell, 1960. That's what 63 years ago. How the hell can you just like? Can you push yourself to like be like, yeah, I'm going to do this? Because they must have been obviously scared and stuff, and they wouldn't have had a clue what was actually going to happen. Man, that is wild. Called the Trieste. Their five-hour descent was... Wait, they were on this? This is massive. ...fraught with challenges. The water pressure near the bottom was nearly a thousand times greater than atmospheric pressure at sea level. During the journey, this caused the viewing window to crack, limiting their time spent on the sea floor... <coughs> To only 20 minutes. Flipping hell. Even in such a short amount of time, what they saw would shock the scientific community. Life, pale shrimp and flounder-like fish, along with what they described as a dark brown diatomaceous ooze that covered the sea floor. Picard described this moment with excitement in a book about the voyage. Here, in an instant, was the answer that biologists had asked for the decades. Could life exist in the greatest depths of the ocean? It could. When James Cameron followed in the Triester's footsteps on board the Deep Sea Challenger in 2012... Wait, so he was... They didn't go here ever again until 2012. I say ever again. They didn't go here until 2012, what, 50 years later? I'm assuming that's the case because he's just sort of jumped forward to him, James Cameron, so I'm assuming it was him who went next. If that's the case, it's kind of the same with the moon as well. We've not been for, what, 50 years now or something? 40, 50 years? I don't know when we last went, but... 
why have we stopped going on these like missions and stuff? Is it because we now know what it's like? We've been there once. We don't need to do it again. Or are they just aware? They're aware of the dangers and the costs and all that sort of stuff. I just wonder why, because you managed to do these things so long ago, and obviously they've gone here since, which is good. They actually went here in 2012, 50 years after. But like these voyages, like the more you go, the more you learn and all this sort of stuff. But I guess there's again the costs will be insane, and again the dangers. The risk to reward, maybe, maybe they can't find someone who'd want to do it. Although I'm assuming there's just because there's so many people out there, there's gonna be someone who's always willing to do this or wanting to do this. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's like we sort of we explore places once and then we're like, okay, we don't need to go there again. Again, maybe there's reasons that I don't know. But he too saw the sprawling microbial mats, bizarre-looking filamentous clumps of microorganisms living off chemicals from altered rocks. 10,912 meters or 35,803 feet down in a sunless God, world. Look how dark it is. This doesn't do it justice for how dark it is either because the lights are on. <laughs> Flipping hell. This would be darkness that you cannot even imagine. It is these bacteria that support more complex creatures. For without sunlight, Larger animals must instead rely on the energy produced by bacteria undergoing chemosynthesis. What? The deep sea equivalent to photosynthesis. Discoveries in the dark. The footage you're seeing now was taken by an unmanned Japanese submersible called Kaiko in nine. Oh, maybe that's why. Maybe they don't go on manned missions. They just go on like they use robots and stuff, which probably does make more sense, to be fair. 1996. Having reached a depth of 10,897 meters, it marked the deepest dive for an unmanned submersible at the time. Okay. Its goal was to sample bacteria from the mats that Picard and Walsh had observed nearly 40 years earlier. They found that a number of these bacterial species appeared to be obligately barophilic, meaning they thrived under high environmental pressures, proving that the idea that life could only exist in more moderate conditions was flawed. Yeah. But in 1998, Keiko returned to the Challenger Deep and stumbled upon more complex life. Hirondelia gigas, a gigantic amphipod species. This discovery posed a bit of a mystery. The extreme pressures of the deep sea cause calcium carbonate that makes up the shells of amphipods and many marine animals to dissolve more readily in water, leaving their soft bodies vulnerable. As such, Amphipods are not usually found below about 5,000 meters or 16,400 feet. And yet here in Kaiko's lights was a giant amphipod, what? retaining even its tough exoskeleton. How? It has since been found that they protect their shells using a form of aluminium armor, using chemicals in their gut to extract aluminium ions from the seafloor mud. That is mental. How the hell have they like adapted their environments to this level that is wild while they forage for food in their role as detrivores these amphipods occupy a key role in the ecosystem they act as a cleanup crew possessing enzymes that are able to digest even wood what they can eat wood In more recent times, remote submersibles have caught yet more oddities of the Mariana Trench in their headlights. Among the most abundant inhabitants are the Holothurians. Sea cucumbers, like the remarkable sea pig with its ring of feeding tentacles that it uses to sift through the mud. It actually does look like a cucumber, what the hell? Do people eat these? I swear I've seen things of people eating these, maybe not, I don't know. I might be waffling out my ass, but... ...and grab onto food. Some scientists believe that Picard's fish 
was, in fact, a sea cucumber, for it is thought that fish are unable to survive where the pressure is so great that it would dissolve the bones of any vertebrates. The deepest known fish thrives at depths of 8,000 meters, or 26,200 feet. <laughs> Mental. Still two kilometers above the Challenger Deep, the Mariana snailfish, discovered in 2014, yet given the scientific name Pseudoliparis swire to commemorate Sub-Lieutenant Herbert Swire from the HMS Challenger. Is that a... Um, but snailfish and amphipods are not the only odd. What am I trying to think of? What was. Was that a jellyfish that I just saw? Balls found in the trench. Gigantic xenophionophores grow to be 20 centimeters in diameter, yet consist of only a single cell. Predatory tunicates called sea squirts anchor their bodies to the <laughs> sides of canyons in wait of passing prey. Wait, so these are like the sea versions of Venus flytraps, just sitting there waiting to eat something. God damn, there's a brutal world out there. While deep sea hatchet fish use bioluminescence to blend in with their surroundings. While only glimpses of these otherworldly organisms have been recorded, their abundance goes to show that life will always find a way to survive. What the fuck? Even when faced with the intense challenge of living at the heart of the ocean's underworld. We need to go deeper. Despite all the expeditions and the footage that's been gathered, we have still only just begun to dip our toes into the hidden world of the Mariana Trench. It is likely that many new species await discovery and will help us piece together the puzzle of how animals can survive such extremities. Researching the Mariana's microorganisms could lead to vital breakthroughs in biomedicine and biotechnology and shed light on the story of life's emergence on planet Earth. But even the furthest depths are within reach of human-driven destruction. How's oh, the plastic bag? Already has plastic been found in a place we scarcely understand. Jeez. Who knows what vi- Is that Olaf? We scarcely understand. <laughs> You've got fucking frozen stuff down here, jeez. Who knows what vital discoveries might vanish bef Wait, this is, um... Like an octopus, no? The hell? Before we come to understand their importance. This portion of the video is sponsored by NordVPN. Well, there we go. Getting the money at the end. Deserved. Um, obviously, if you want to find this channel out, I'm going to subscribe. It was a really interesting video. Um, links will be in the description to the video that I just watched or I just reacted to. But, mate, the depths of the ocean. God damn. Do you have any idea how insane it is for a creature to ingest the minerals on the seafloor and use it and use its gut to create an organic form of aluminium to armor itself? That is straight up out of sci-fi. That is mental. I don't understand how that's even a thing. Who's here because of the missing submarine? There we go, yeah. People's interest seems to have been piqued by this, including me. I don't know why, but it's just, it's, because I've never had, I, I've always found it, like, crazy, right? Because I know it's not very explored. But I've never really looked into it. And I don't know why, because it's just more fascination. I've always been so fascinated by space. But the deep sea is just as unknown. And it's on our planet, so it's like, it just has more of a mystique, I guess. Um, but yeah, let me know if if you if you want more of these kinds of reactions because again, I'm not very aware of a lot of things to do with the the Mariana Trench and just the ocean in general. But yeah, that's that. Hopefully, you found this interesting. Um, yeah, until next time, like subscribe and peace.